Hi, my name is Mary Beth Lee and I'm an Intel analyst at the Vertex project. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can customize your Synapse UI to best support your workflow. Just like you'd set up your desk and organize your work environment, you can also set up your Synapse UI so that you have quick access to the tools that you use the most and can display information in ways that are the most helpful for you. We're gonna go over to a tool that we have called Workspaces, which you can see on the side here in this toolbar. Optic has a default workspace, which for now we can see in the workspace selector. However, there are um, occasions where you might wanna have your own workspace that you create. For example, one of my upcoming research projects is going to involve a lot of malware analysis. There are certain tags that I'm going to be paying more attention to than others. There are certain commands that I'm going to be running more frequently. And so I might decide that it's worth creating my own workspace. So to do that, I can go over to the side here where there's add new workspace. I'm going to name my workspace malware analysis since that's what I'll be working on. I'll go ahead and save it. Um, one of the things that I want to do is set up some tag colors. Uh, this means that nodes that are um, have those certain tags will be color coded and it's a little bit easier for me to visually recognize when they have a specific tag. Uh, so for my research project, there's a few tag trees in particular that are going to be more important for me. Um, the first one that I'm going to probably be paying the most attention to is CNO or CNO mal. Uh, anything that we've said is malicious or related to a specific malware family, I'm going to want to make sure that I recognize that. So I'm going to make any anything that has a CNO mal tag show up in kind of this uh, reddish color. Uh, this tool will take any HTML recognized color name um, or RGB or custom. Um, so we'll make that kind of a reddish. I'm also going to want to know anything that has a rep tag, so anything that a third party has reported an assessment about. I'm going to make that gold. And these are ordered by precedence. So if I have a node that has both a CNO mal tag and a rep tag, um, because I've listed CNO mal as higher, this is what color that node will be. Um, if I decide that I want to pay more attention to the rep tags, I can go ahead and drag it to the top and just switch those. Um, so the order here does matter in how it's displayed. The next tag that I'm probably going to pay a, a lot more attention to is the CNO rel tag. And this is anything that we've said is related to malware, but not itself malicious. Um, so I might want to make sure that anything with a CNO rel is uh, identifiable, um, easily identifiable for me. And the last one that I'm going to want is my internal tag tree that I use, an MB tag tree. Um, I use the MB tag for anything that I'm currently working on or I haven't yet uh, triaged. So I want to make sure that anything that has an MB tag is um, easy for me to define or easy for me to identify because it means that I need to come back to that node and finish working on it. So we'll go ahead and add that. Um, so these are the nodes that I think, or the, these are the tags rather that I think I'm gonna go with for now. If I decide at any point to reorder them, I can do that. If I decide I wanna remove any, I can do that. Um, I can also go back here and I can add additional tags if I'd like. This isn't, uh, this isn't final, this isn't set in stone. We can always come back in and adjust our workspaces. Um, the next thing that I might do is create some node actions. Um, node actions are shortcuts to commands. Um, one thing that we tend to use a lot of are power-ups, which are, uh, allow us to query external data resources. Um, power-ups are something that will create their own node actions. Um, however, you can also create node actions for other commands. Uh, for example, I have um, I will be using power ups to pull in additional information about um, file nodes, file bytes nodes, or um, domains or IP addresses. Currently, I could do that through the node actions for each specific power up, and I can go and right click on it on the node that I want to enrich in the research tool, select actions, and then select from the menu of different power ups. However, I want to use a macro that I have that's called an enrich macro. Um, I wrote this macro so that rather than having to go and individually select each power up that I wanted to run, I could just go and execute this macro and it will run all the power ups for me. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit faster, it's a little bit easier um, than selecting individual power ups. So here I'm gonna do the command. Uh, this is the command that will execute that macro and I'll go ahead and add it. Um, the other node action that I'm going to want to add is a uh, Yara node action. Um, one of the things that I'll probably also be doing a lot of is running uh, file bytes against 
all of the R rules that we have in our cortex. And rather than type this out manually each time, I'm just going to put um, the R match command and set it as a node action so that I have a shortcut and just can uh, right click and click to, to run it. So we have our Yara, we have our enrich node actions. Um, I think that's fine for now, so I'll just leave that as is. The last thing that I might do here is look at my research query preferences. Sometimes I'll go in and I'll adjust the load increment for um, say tabular if currently it's set at 500. So if I'm running a query and there's more than 500 results, uh, Synapse will actually load 500 and then it will, I'll get a little pop-up saying, I have an additional results. Do I want to load the next 500 results? Um, if I am working with a ton of data and I know that I'm going to have a lot of results, rather than having to click, you know, like, yes, keep loading 500 by 500, I might go in here and change it so it loads, you know, a thousand at a time before it, it prompts me to ask if it wants to, if I should let it, um, you know, load more. Um, that might be something that I might go and switch, but sometimes I just leave this as is and it's, it's perfectly fine. So we have our research query preferences, we have our node actions, and we have our tag colors. Um, we can go ahead and we can use our workspace selector at the top to go ahead and switch into our malware analysis um, space. So now we're in our malware analysis workspace and we can go over to the research tool. I do most of my work in tabular mode, which is what we're in right now. You can see a tabular right here because I find it the most helpful for how I like to view data. There are a few adjustments that I tend to make, um, mainly surrounding columns that are displayed. And I'll walk you through what I do and how you can uh, make similar adjustments um, that suit how you like to view data. So one of the things that I'll be looking at when I do my work is I'll be looking at um, some file bytes nodes. Now, if I go ahead and I lift these file bytes nodes, you'll notice that they're just right now displayed by the SHA-256 hash. Um, I might decide that I want to show some additional values um, rather than having to go and you know, click on each node and then see the node details on the side here. I can actually uh, select certain properties that I'm most interested in and display those as columns. So for example, I might decide that I'm interested in say maybe the MIME type. So I can select that. Maybe I want to see the compile times. Maybe I want to see the import hash. And maybe I also want to see the size. So I can go ahead and select those as columns. And then I can you know, readjust the sizing so that we can see the values. Um, having the columns is particularly helpful if I decide that I want to do any sort of sorting. Like let's say that I want to see uh, sort by compile time. I can just click on the top and sort, and I'll see 1970 at the top, and then I'll see um, you know, these two don't have compile times populated, but I can see the later compile times here. I might also decide that I want to sort by the import hash value to see um, you know, which nodes uh, have the same import hash value. It's a little bit easier to see here if I sort that way. Um, another thing that I, I like using the columns for is if I decide that I want to query by specific uh, property values, I can always do that over here on the side through the details pane. However, um, having in the columns, it's just a little bit easier because it's right there in front of you. And I can decide, you know, I want to query by this import hash. I can go ahead and do that here. Um, it looks like that's our only sample. We'll go back to our original, our original view. In addition to, to selecting the columns or I'm sorting by the columns, I can also decide at any time to hide columns if I no longer want to see them. For example, if I don't want to see the size, if I decide I don't care about that, I can just go ahead and hide it. If there's any other uh, changes that I want to make to the columns, like let's say I want to change the order in which they appear, I can go over to the hamburger menu on the side here, and I can go to edit columns, and I'll get a little summary of the columns that I have. Let's say that I want import hash to show right after the file bytes, um, shot to six, I can go ahead and drag that, and I'll change, I can just drag that back in place. If I decide that I'm actually not interested in seeing the MIME type, I can also go ahead and just delete it from there. So the edit table uh, columns is another tool that you have for adjusting how these are displayed. One of the things that you can also do in edit columns is display tags. For example, if I want to see the tags that are on these nodes now, I already have a hint at what kind of tags are here because of the color coding that I did. 
But if I want to see all of the tags, I have to go and I have to click on each individual node and then look in the details uh, view right here. Um, however, I can also add those as a column if I'd like. For example, if I wanted to go to edit columns, and let's say that I want to show, I want to be able to view all of the columns that, or sorry, let's say that I want to be able to view all of the tags that are related to virus total. So all of the rep VT tags where virus total made an assessment about this data. I can go over to add column for the column type. I can go to tag glob, and then it's going to ask me uh, what uh, tag I'm looking for. So I'm going to be looking for rep VT, specifically interested in what VT had to report, and I can see them here. So for each sample, I can see all the different virus total tags that are on that sample. And it's a little bit easier for me visually to recognize um, from here what, what these nodes are um, based on tags. I can also go and sort. So the ones that have less tags here um, versus the ones that have virus total made more assessments, I can see them down here. And I can also just sort them the other way if I'd like. If I decide I'm done with those, I can go ahead and hide it. Another thing that you can do with displaying tags in columns is uh, show tags that have uh, timestamps or a min max property. Um, for example, one of the things that I pulled up here is uh, a list of domains that I tagged with this example that sinkhole tag. Now, if we click on this first domain and we go over to the side, we can see that the example sinkhole tag that I created actually has a timestamp. Um, this is a timestamp that I just randomly assigned, but let's pretend that this timestamp is supposed to say uh, the dates, the date range that this uh, domain was sinkholed. Um, and let's say that I wanted to be able to see the date range on all of these nodes um, so that I can know when they're sinkholed and I want to be able to sort by them. It would be really hard to do that right now because I would have to go and click on each individual one and look at it in the side. However, we can go back to our hamburger menu and back to edit columns, and we can actually add that tag um, range as a column. So we'll go to column type, and we'll go to tag, and then when it prompts us for the tag, we'll say example sinkhole. Save. And so here we can see the example sinkhole, um, the minimum time value, and then the maximum time value, and for each of these domains. And so this is a little bit easier if we decide that we want to be able to sort by the time, and if we wanted to use this view then to be able to identify, you know, whether there were overlaps and when certain domains were sinkholes or things like that. It's a little bit easier with this, this view to do that. The last thing that I want to show you in terms of columns is how to add an embed column. Embed columns are really helpful if you're ever working with nodes where one property is a GUID value. Um, so for example, let's say that I was looking at my Indestroyer uh, malware samples, and I decided that I wanted to look at all of the uh, Yara matches they had. So I wanted to see all of the samples that had matched with a specific Yara rule. Right now, if I do that, um, I can see the file, but then the rule itself is just a GUID value. So it's hard for me to recognize what rule this actually matched on because it's just a GUID value. One of the ways that I could see what the rule is for is to pivot again and look at uh, that specific rule. Um, but if I make that pivot, I can go and I can click on it and I can select the name um, and text. But I, in this case, I can't see the file anymore because I pivoted just the rule itself. This would be a case in which an embed column would be really helpful. Um, rather than have to make that full pivot over to the R rule, I can actually just go and embed one of the properties from that R rule node. And in this case, we're going to embed the name property. So we'll go over to the hamburger menu here, go down to edit columns, we'll add a column, and we'll select embed. And so I'm going to want to go over to the R rule node, and then I'm going to want to embed the name property and save. And so here's my embed column. I have to refresh so that will populate. And so here I was able to, to pull the name value from the uh, YAR rule node itself. So from here, I don't need this one anymore because it means nothing to me, so I can hide it. And so here I have the file, and then I have the name of the rule that it matched on. And so I was able to use the embed columns as a way to be able to um, 
to show, show the rule in a way that I would recognize it. I'm borrowing and I'm embedding the, the name property from an adjacent node so that I have a, a view that actually means something to me. It's a little bit more um, human readable as it were. The last thing that I wanna show you is how to save query bookmarks. These can be really helpful if um, say I have a query that I use frequently, but I don't, I don't remember the entire thing. Maybe it's long or fairly complicated. Maybe somebody else shared a query with me that they use and I decided, hey, this is a cool query. I wanna keep it around in case I, you know, it, it ends up being useful later, but it's not something that I'm using right now. Um, what I tend to do a lot is at the end of the day, I'll save whatever query I'm currently working on so that I know uh, where to pick up the next morning. I can just go to my saved query and say like, oh, this is, this is where I left off last night. This is where I need to start back up again. So we can see our query bookmarks by going over here to the three dots. We'll click on it and we'll go down to bookmarks. You have the option to create a query bookmark. And if you click on that, it'll take the whatever my query is in here. Um, I can make any edits in here if I'd like to, but we'll just leave it. Um, I can give it a name, so we'll name it Destroyer Yara Matches. And then I can go ahead and save that as bookmark. If I wanted to go and see all bookmarks that I have, I can go here. I can see I have one that I've named FQDNs. I can see my Destroyer Yara Matches here. I can click here to manage my bookmarks. So let's see uh, my Yara one here. Um, if I want to make any edits, I can do that. If I you know, don't know what this one is, I can go ahead and click on it and I can view what this was. Um, I can, if I decide that I don't need this one, I can go ahead and delete it. Otherwise, I can copy it to the clipboard and I can just go ahead and paste that query in and run it. So that would be, for example, if I was done for the day, I would probably save this query. And then the next morning, I'd copy it to the clipboard um, and run it again and know where I'd left off. Um, so bookmarks are an easy way that you can save queries, whether they're ones that you use a lot but don't want to remember or they're, you know, just whatever you were working on the night before that you want to be able to, to get back quickly. So that's a quick run through of the different ways that I like to optimize my Synapse UI. As always, please feel free to reach out to any of us if you have questions. You can use our community Slack to reach out to us um, or you can use email or Twitter. We're always happy to help.